Today we're back to the budget end with the James Donkey 619 mechanical keyboard. This is a keyboard that you'll see on many Chinese websites and at a budget price as well, so I wanted to make sure people know what they're getting. Opening up the box, we have a little user manual, which is all in Chinese, but there is an English version online. We have the keyboard itself, we get a yellow plastic ring keycap puller, and a pretty nice branded and braided micro USB cable with a right angled end. And the first thing that will for sure divide people straight away is the design. But I'll just say right now that the yellow pieces can be taken off, which I'll show later. Right, so this comes in a few versions. This is the full size version with 104 keys. So we have the numpad on the right hand side, but it does also come in a 10 keyless version with 87 keys and also a silver slash white version. I think the biggest talking point of this design are these yellow plastic pieces on the end of the keyboard, which are hard to miss because they are that bright yellow. They're quite an angular design, almost giving it a spaceshipy feel for lack of a better description, but they do kind of give the keyboard a more plasticky feel as well. They also give the keyboard more height, suspending the main enclosure from the table surface. On the left one, we have the James Donkey logo, which is a perfect spot to put it, and I'm happy they didn't put it above the arrow keys. And these also have the rubber feet on it, and these little flip-up feet. And when I first saw them, I was concerned that they would be a bit flimsy, but they've proven to be absolutely fine, although they aren't rubber tipped. The rest of the keyboard has a more understated colour scheme. The top plate is a really nice looking sheet of aluminium, which has a dark grey metallic colour, kind of gunmetal look. It has a smooth finish and doesn't show any fingerprints. In the top right hand corner there's the lock indicator LEDs, which have these hoods over them. Again, a bit out there, but I don't really mind actually. The bottom plastic piece continues that aggressive look with what almost looks like venting or something, and to be honest it's not too out there, and it doesn't extend further than it has to like what the yellow pieces do. And over here there seems to be some sort of black marks, but it's nowhere else on the keyboard and I don't know what caused it. On the rear we have our micro USB port, and the cable is shaped exactly to the kind of housing, so it makes for a real solid connection. Although being right angled, the cable goes towards your mouse, which some may not like, including myself. As expected from a budget mechanical keyboard with this typical aluminium plus plastic enclosure, it is a pretty lightweight keyboard, but given its shape with all its indents and angles, it's very rigid and shows minimal flex. The keycaps are double shot ABS keycaps, meaning that the legends are this yellow plastic, so it will never fade away, and they're pretty thin at about 1mm thick. The typeface itself is pretty clean, however, because of the double shot nature, they have gaps in the looped legends which kind of messes it up. And they went all out with the yellow, with the legends being that translucent yellow, but also the LEDs being quite a warm yellow or amber looking colour. The lighting is very simple, and as usual it's controlled via the function key at the bottom. We can turn the lights on and off with function and page down, and the brightness and the speed of the effect can be controlled with the arrow keys. So they've kept it very simple with a singular colour and the modes, which is honestly enough for most people, but you are stuck with the yellow which some may not like. On the function row at the top, which is also accessed by the function key, we have some media control keys and a couple of shortcut keys. We can lock the whole keyboard with function and F11. We can lock the windows key with function and windows. And finally we can allow the WASD keys to be arrow keys with function and W. One of the really cool things about this keyboard is that it actually comes with Gatoron key switches, and for those who don't know, Gatoron key switches are clones of the Cherry MX switches, but are often regarded as better because of their smoothness, especially with the linear key switches. I have the Gatoron brown switches here, so these mimic the Cherry MX browns being a light tactile switch, so there's a bump halfway but no audible click, but this does of course come in the other Gatoron switches as well.
It's great to see that they went with the Gatoron switches instead of the much more common Outamu switches which feature on the majority of budget mechanical keyboards out there, although they are using non-genuine cherry style stabs so unfortunately there is some rattle with the stabilised keys. Taking the keyboard apart is simple although you will need a hex screwdriver or the right sized allen key. Here's the yellow plastic pieces, and again these do hold the rubber feet and the flip up feet. The bottom plastic shell is actually quite sturdy because of its irregular shape and various indents, and it also does have ribbing on the bottom surface to reinforce it that bit more. The aluminium plate is at about 1.5mm thick, but is folded at the front and back to make it more rigid and close off the enclosure. There's no complaints for me with the PCB, the soldering job is very clean, but one thing to note is that they are using through hole LEDs rather than SMD LEDs which is seen on most newer keyboards, so you would have to desolder the LED as well if you were to desolder a key switch for whatever reason. And here it is without the yellow pieces, and it's way more understated now, it still maintains that sports car aesthetic but in a more subdued way, especially since it isn't bright yellow anymore. It also brings the keyboard just a touch lower, however because we don't have those yellow pieces anymore, we no longer have the flip up feet and the flat rubber feet, although you can just stick the rubber feet on wherever. And I don't know, it kinda did grow on me and is probably on the boundary of what I can take in terms of out there aesthetics, and this is mainly attributed to the nice looking aluminium plate on top, but yeah it is still quite gamery but it is a gaming keyboard after all. Overall it's actually a pretty decent mechanical keyboard. The build is pretty lightweight with the plastic and thin aluminium construction, but it is sturdy and shows minimal flex, it's what you expect from a budget mechanical keyboard. One of its big features in my opinion is that it has Gatoron key switches. Often regarded as a nicer alternative to Cherry MX switches, they provide a nice typing experience although the stabilised keys are pretty rattly which can be helped with some lube. But I think the major deciding factor in this case is just how you think the keyboard looks because of its uniqueness. Do keep in mind that the yellow pieces can be removed to tone it down a bit, however you will still be stuck with the yellow legends and LEDs, but looks are subjective so it's completely up to you. At the time of this review, on Amazon it's just under 50 USD, so we're still at the budget end, and is what I'd say is a pretty fair price, however it is more expensive on other sites and it starts to push towards some solid boards from bigger brands, so you may look to save up a bit more. And do remember that it also does come in a 10 keyless version and also in white.